Hey, this is Kathy from Kathy Cooks For You and welcome to my kitchen. I'm going to show you what to do with roasted vegetables. Now you think, well, don't you just roast them and eat them? Well, yeah, you can, no biggie, but you can also do so much more, especially with fall roasted vegetables. So this first dish we're going to do is we are going to make a salad with roasted vegetables. So we need to get our vegetables roasted, then cooled. So you could do this the day before you want to want to make them. You can do it over the weekend. The key is we want to make a lot of roasted vegetables so that we can use them throughout the week in different dishes. So stay tuned to watch this amazing recipe and two more recipes to follow on what to do with your roasted vegetables. All right, first what we're doing is we are gonna cut up butternut squash. I already cut up one small one, and this is quite a bit larger, but I figured why not cut it up? I'm roasting vegetables, why not do more than one at a time? So, when you want to cube butternut squash, this is how you would cut it up. Take off the end, and then we're gonna make slices, and see how I'm rolling it? This is like my handle. I'm just rolling it and making slices. It's so much easier to make thin slices this way than to cut it in big sections and then try to do it because you have a handle. All right, maybe I can get one more. Yes, one more. And then we're starting to get to the core. Now this, I'm just kind of cut in half, scoop it out, and I may cut it down the middle again one more time. And then these, I'll do something else with. These won't go in the salad. So once you have these slices here, then you're just gonna go around and cut the ends off. Pretty simple, huh? This makes it so easy to cube when you do it this way. And then your pieces are nice and small, which are great for a salad. Then what we're gonna do is you can try to stack, you don't have to, and just two at a time, cut them this way, turn it, and cut them again. And you have beautiful cubes that you can use. Now, as a time saver, you can go to your grocery store. Most grocery stores now have butternut squash in a bag already cubed for you. These I will be roasting in a separate pan later. Okay, on to our Brussels sprouts. Let's get these all prepared. How we're gonna do that is we cut off the end and then we just take a few of the pieces off. There, now it's all cleaned up. Okay, now we're gonna cut these in quarters. Why am I cutting them in quarters and not halves? I want them to cook quicker. And I really want them to brown up. I don't want them to steam. So when we're making this, we have to decide, is one pan enough? because we do not want our vegetables to steam. We want them to roast. Now, roasted vegetables, you're like, what, 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 what's the difference? What do you mean, crowding my vegetables? Okay, if we have a pile of vegetables like this cooking, all that moisture underneath here, you know, at the bottom, that's steam. And it's gonna steam everything and keep it nice and wet. We want it roasted. Roasted means, all the air is getting around all the vegetables and as that water, the liquid inside, each of these vegetables evaporates, it doesn't go onto the other vegetables. It goes and evaporates into the air. Does that make sense? We want to basically, we're drying our vegetables out of it through roasting. And there you have your little lesson on roasting versus steaming. So since we're making so much here, we're probably gonna have to use two pans and that's all right. And you know what? You may even need to cook it separately. Do you know why? Because all that moisture in the oven is still gonna steam your vegetables. So we might be doing it twice. We're not gonna put the summer squash in right away. I don't want my summer squash to be all um, like mushy. You know, I want it to still have some, some texture to it. So I'm not gonna put that in right away. Let's see, how do I wanna cut these? Yeah, let's just not think about it. And just cut the dang onion, right? So this would be 
a great thing to do over the weekend. Serve it as a side. And then the leftovers, you are going to make two other dishes with it. Or you choose. Maybe you'll only have enough for one dish, but you can choose out of the two I'm going to give you. We are going to add our drizzle of olive oil, salt, pepper, garlic, and we're going to drizzle a tad of balsamic vinegar. This is just going to give it a punch of flavor that you are going to love. Okay, we're just going to do a drizzle of this. Okay, oven's ready. Now we're going to get in here and just massage break up our onions a little bit and just get all these flavors together I definitely need two pans see how high it is it's too high too many layers I want one layer and I've got two okay now we're one layer well, let me set the timer here let's put those in for 15 minutes and see what happens while those are cooking, we can cut our squash. Now you can also put some sweet potato in this. I just happen to have so much butternut squash. I was like, well, why use sweet potato? Okay, these have been in 15 minutes. I took out the smaller pan because I didn't want any steaming to happen. And I'll just cook them separately. Whew. Let's see. Oh, we don't, we have no, little browning. We have a lot of work to do yet. So we're leaving those in. I'm going to put them in for another 10. All right. We're gonna pull these out now, and we're gonna see what we have. I put them in 10 more minutes. Okay, they're starting to get brown. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Okay, now we need to put in our squash. I'm gonna give it one quick stir. Remember, I already seasoned the squash just like I seasoned everything else. So we're gonna put these in for another 15 minutes. And then they should be done. Okay, things are looking good. My last two minutes, I'm turning the oven off, I'm putting it on broil, and just really crisp that up. Actually, I'm gonna put it on the top shelf. We'll see, we'll see. Oh, that's what I like to see. Beautiful. We're going to put this back on 450 because I have to do this all over again. But the important part, part is my vegetables. The important part is that my vegetables are not steamed. They are roasted. That's what we want. All right, the time has come to assemble our salad. We have our cold roasted vegetables and then some toppers for our salad besides our roasted vegetables is gonna be some toasted walnuts, some uh, dried cranberries. I got the 50% less sugar ones. And I'm not sure, I've got some feta and bacon, but I'm not sure about that. So let's assemble our salad. All right. Delicious greens, mixed greens. We got a spring mix and some kale in here. Yummy! Now, I'm going to make a little salad off to the side because that's what I'm going to try to make sure it tastes good. And this, I have a house full of people coming over tonight. So this is what they're going to get. This nice big one over here. And I'm going to dress it also. They don't get to dress their own. I gotta share these with you. These are super cool. I got these vintage salad tongs for 50 cents at a thrift store. Super, super cool. So happy I got those. All right. Now, remember, we're not using all this. Remember, we made tons of the roasted vegetables. So we're just gonna kind of sprinkle those around. And then we're gonna save the rest. And also, remember we had uh, we have the round parts of the butternut squash, so we get to use these up too this week. And that will be another side dish for us. And we just cooked once. Isn't that super awesome? 
Okay, one more scoop. All right, I think I made way too many walnuts here, but oh well. Put them in smoothie or something. So gotta sprinkle some walnuts and then cranberries. Put a few here. And bacon? What do you guys think? We want some bacon. Let me just open up the bacon. This is what I do. I open, I open it up and I give it a whiff. Now I know bacon is so good with Brussels sprouts, right? Let's try a little piece of bacon with a little of that butternut squash and some walnut. And let's just see, maybe we can put a little of that dressing on here. And let's just see if those flavors go well together. Oh yes. And that's how you do it, guys, if you're unsure. I'm not going to put a lot of bacon. This isn't a bacon lover salad. It's just for a hint of that smokiness that goes really well with the balsamic vinegar. Oops, that's way too much on my little salad. And there's my little salad. Oh, side dish number one made with our roasted vegetables. Actually, this is side dish number two because the first side dish is just serving it like this, right? So this would be second way to serve it. That is a super tasty salad. Mmm, excellent. You gotta try it this way. Roasted vegetables and salad. Mwah! 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 Awesome. Okay, let me show you this quickie side dish. This is just mashed butternut squash. You're gonna wanna scoop out all the veggie meats inside those little pieces at the end those round pieces that we did not cube mash them all up that's all right mash 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 keep all that brown stuff that's caramelized add some butter and a little brown sugar wait for it there it is and you're done all right so we roasted some vegetables we already had vegetables as a side then we used the leftovers and we made a delicious fall salad with a great balsamic vinaigrette. Now today we are going to take more of these vegetables and we are going to make a frittata. So we're going to start by just putting our vegetables and let's say there's one cup. We're going to use like two, you yeah, know, we're going to, you know what? We're throwing the rest of it in there. So that was about like three or four cups of vegetables. We're gonna let that warm up and when we put our egg mixture over it, it's gonna cook a little bit on the stove, then we put it in the oven. So I have 12 eggs that I'm gonna beat up here. And to that, we are going to add salt, a healthy pitch of salt, pepper to your liking. Green onion, that's optional. We already have onion in our roasted peppers, but I had some green onion, so I'm gonna use it. The other thing I'm gonna use, because I had it, was some, what is this stuff called? Oh, think, Kathy, think. Tomatoes, sun-dried tomatoes. I had some sun-dried tomatoes. I'm gonna throw all those in there. Frittatas are one of those meals, it's a clean out the fridge meal. This is not something you have to plan for. You just clean out your fridge. That's what's great about it. You can also do that with a quiche. Um, I'm not a big fan of quiches. A quiche, the ratio of egg to cream, use much more cream in a quiche. And then you have the, the uh, crust also. So that's fattening. So it's much more fattening than a frittata. A frittata just has a little bit of cream in it. And you really, you don't even have to. But let's say about three tablespoons where, you know, like a quiche is like, what is it, the ratio, like two eggs to one cup of cream, something like that. Uh, so I'm not too into quiches. I am a frittata girl. So have that all mixed together. I've got my cheese. We'll talk about that in a second. Let me just stir real quick. I just heat it up here. Turn the pan down. Oh, the smells are so good. Cheese. So, so you're looking at a ratio of like 12 eggs to, you know, like three tablespoons of, I'm using heavy cream, um, 
use some sort of fat dairy product. If you don't have, a, you know, if all you have is skim milk, then add a tab of melted butter, a tab of melted butter, no biggie. And then we're going to put in our cheese. I have eight ounces of Fontina and four of a goat cheese. Now this isn't the mushy, semi-soft goat cheese. This was a cheese that was shreddable, a hard goat cheese. And it has a much milder flavor. And so I thought, hey, I'm going to try that. I've never had it. And I thought, let's try it. Now the Fontina, I picked Fontina because it melts beautifully. It's so good in pasta and so good in something like this because it's creamy and just melts well. It doesn't have any oiliness to it. It doesn't separate. It's just a beautiful cheese to work with. Our oven is on at 400. What you cook your frittata in is a pan that is safe for the stovetop and the oven. I have been wanting to get a, you know, like a 14 inch cast iron pan just for frittatas, but I haven't got it yet. So my pan is a little big, which means I'm not going to need to have it in the oven as long as someone that's using a 14. That's probably a 16 inch right there. When you're testing it to see if it's done or not when it's been in the oven, start with 10 minutes and go from there. And if it's jiggling on top, obviously you know it's not ready to be eaten. So when it firms up and you cut into the center, make sure there's no like egg leaking into that crack and that's how you know it's done. So every pan is going to be different. Also with a cast iron pan, that cast iron pan holds heat so well, things tend to cook really quick with cast iron. So we are ready to put our goodies in. We have our heat on low. We are going to add our cheese, flatten out your thing, because you're really not going to stir it once you get it in here. So flatten out your veggies, then we're going to put our cheese on top, and then we're going to pour our egg over it. Oh man, oh man. Just let that seep all in. Oh wow, I have a lot of veggies in there. So mine is going to have a lot bigger veggie ratio to egg because I put, I think a few too many veggies in there, but you know what? It's still going to taste amazing. So I'm not going to worry about it. And we're just going to let it cook here a little bit. And when you see the egg along the edges start to firm up a little, that's when you put it in the oven. Now mine, you can barely even see because I have so much vegetables in there that um, the egg hasn't risen up that high. And that's fine. This is going to be absolutely spectacular. Our edges are firmed up. It is time to go in the oven. Uh-oh. Already in there. Take that one off. Just put it on your middle rack and set your timer for 10 minutes. Can you see how it's moving? It is not done. So we're going to put that in for another five minutes. Let's check now that it's been in for 15 minutes. Okay, it has definitely firmed up. See, it's no longer moving. Let me get a knife here. Ooh, almost touched it. It's no longer moving. It's a little confusing because your cheese is gooey. I'm taking it out. Is that not incredible? I'm taking it out because it's still going to be cooking in the pan. Amazing. I cannot wait to eat this. And how simple, right? Totally weak night. Wow, that's beautiful. Oh, that looks so pretty. Let's try this. That is absolutely Super, if I must say so myself. I know I say that all the time when I eat. I don't know if I just have super taste buds that just appreciate food so well, but that is downright incredible. Oh, that's good. Wow. Thank you so much for watching Kathy Cooks For You. Please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel below. That red button that says subscribe, and once you press subscribe, if you press the little bell next to it, 
That'll give you a notification so you'll be notified every time I post a video. So you want to do that too. And also I would love to hear from you. So please comment below with something nice and encouraging and I will hopefully respond to it. Have a great day and make this. This is a super soft time saver making the big thing of veggies ahead of time and then using it through the week.